Um, in this video today we are going to continue what we uh, were discussing last time about the material balance for reactive systems and last time we saw how we can do the material balance for reactive systems and how the degrees of freedom is different because of the reaction that takes place inside the reactor um, and uh, today we're going to continue so um, let's um, um, uh, see what we did last time and this is the last thing we uh, ended up with last video and this was the uh, final flow sheet that was a catalytic reactor with a flash separator and we did the material balance and this is the final composition of each stream um, and um, we saw how we how we uh, were able to do these calculations and um, actually uh, the reason that I did it last time because um, I, I want to highlight something that's really important and it's uh, uh, something that every engineer uh, should keep in mind and uh, take care of this because it's something very uh, important and economically uh, really important when we deal with flow sheets like these so actually if you check the stream 3 um, then we will see that which is uh, these two uh, 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 composition and flow rates are the same thing and if you see this uh, it's almost one third of the feed so this uh, the feed is 33 per th or 330 uh, kilomoles per hour of carbon monoxide and 620 kilomoles per hour of hydrogen and as you see here there is 128 and 219 it's almost one third of the feed is um, uh, vented as uh, exhaust or something that was not used so it's actually lost raw materials something that you didn't make use of because of the conversion and in our case the conversion was 60 percent and in some cases the conversion is even less like 30 or 20 percent so um getting rid of all this stuff in 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 this way is just wasting raw materials that are really uh, expensive and it's like well, throwing money in the air so actually uh, because of this problem the flow sheet has to take another uh, shape which is uh, uh, using what's so called a recycle stream so we don't uh, throw these uh, uh, products or the, the unreacted reactants but we uh, recycle them and we use this recycle stream to mix them with the feed in order to uh, make use of these uh, unused raw materials so in this case you see we have here another unit that's added to the flow sheet which is a mixer and it just mixes the feed the uh, uh, fresh feed with this recycle stream in order to make use of these uh, uh, raw materials in this case these two streams are mixed and the the feed to the reactor is gonna be a mixture of both um, and uh, there is one more thing that you need to keep in mind that there was one component here which is the methane and we know that it didn't contribute in the reaction it's just an inert material that is there in the feed and we cannot get rid of and we didn't have a problem with this before because it just goes in and out and it doesn't form any uh, problem to us but in this case if you are gonna recycle this stream then you have methane here that's gonna be recycled and returns and is mixed with the fresh methane that you have here so actually this methane is gonna be uh, accumulating which means that it's gonna circulate and instead of getting rid of this methane it's gonna be mixed with methane so instead of you have five percent you'll have like six seven eight nine ten and then it goes up and up because it, it it's not uh, consumed and it's not uh, uh, thrown away so actually this uh, can form a problem that may uh, ruin the whole process so in this case we uh, use we use another unit that regulates this uh, thing which is called the purge stream in and it's just a little bit of this uh, uh, top uh, stream from the flash separator instead of recycling all the stream we get rid of some of this in order to get rid of this uh, accumulation problem so it's just a um, splitter it, it doesn't change anything of the flow rate uh, or I mean in, in the composition it just uh, splits and like maybe 10% is thrown away and 90% is recycled back to the uh, reactor so um, <clears throat> when we look at the final flow sheet it will look like this so uh, uh, instead of having uh, four streams we have now seven and instead of having three, uh, two, compo two units in the flow sheet we have four units and as you see the flow sheet is getting more complicated so um, and these two units are the splitter and the mixer as I just mentioned. So uh, 
uh, we are gonna uh, see how we'll solve this system and just to remind us with the ourselves with the additional relation so we have the conversion which is 60 percent and we know the four uh, relations between stream three and four for each component and we have uh, one more relation for the splitter let's say it's the 90 and 10 percent uh, splitting ratio and um, so these are all the relations that we know uh, before we do the degrees of freedom analysis of this uh, flow sheet <clears throat> so um, let's go ahead and do this so we will start with the first unit in the degrees of freedom uh, or I mean in the uh, flow sheet which is the mixer so for the mixer we have three streams and then four and four so we have seven uh, I mean I mean eleven uh, variables we have four equations because we have four components we have three given variables and we don't have any additional relations so the degrees of freedom is going to be zero therefore uh, for the catalytic reactor we have eight uh, components and one reaction so it's going to be nine we have four equations and we have no given variables and we have one additional relation which is the conversion so the degrees of freedom is going to be four for the flash separator we have four uh, components in and four out uh, up and down then it's going to be 12 um we know uh, that we have four equations we have no given variables we have four relations between stream three and three uh, stream four and the degrees of freedom is going to be four so till now we don't have any unit that has degrees of freedom of zero and uh, as we as we all know we cannot uh, tell that the system cannot be solved unless we do the process even if all the units are not solvable um for the splitter we have three components uh, i mean three streams uh, each has four components then it has 12 uh, variables we have four equations and no given variables and um, when we talk about the additional relation there is something really specific for the splitter because we know that the splitter doesn't change any uh, composition so we know that the composition of stream 5 and stream 6 and stream 7 are all the same just the flow rate is different so to uh, take this information into account when we do the degrees of freedom of the splitter there is one specific relation uh, or a restriction uh, that can be put in the degrees of freedom table as additional relation just for the splitter which is called the splitter restriction and this splitter restriction it's you, it's a number that you can calculate and put it as additional relation and it's calculated by this equation it's m minus one multiplied by m n minus one and m is the number of splits in our case we have five splits into a stream six and seven so we have two splits and the n is the number of components and in our case we have four so in this case the split restriction will be two minus one which is one multiplied by four minus one which is three so we have three plus the splitting ratio which is the 90 percent is uh, going back uh, to the mixer so we have four additional relation and in this case the degrees of freedom is going to be four <coughs> um, so as we see no uh, single unit has zero degrees of freedom uh, so let's see maybe the overall can solve this problem for the overall loop we have um, uh, 11 plus 1 variables and we have uh, four equations we have three given variables no additional relations so the degrees of freedom is 5 so even the overall is not helping again we cannot guarantee till we uh, see the process so for the process the number of variables if you calculate them it will be 27 plus 1 and the one in the rate of reaction we have the equations that we have are all the summation of the units so we have 16 equations we have uh, three given variables and if you calculate all the additional relations we have the conversion we have the splitter four in the splitter and four in the flash separator so that it's nine so the degrees of freedom is zero so the process can be solved with the information that we have right now so we cannot uh, think of any other information that we need to add to the system so we can solve it um, and this is the case almost for all the uh, flow sheets that have this uh, recycle stream and this is why the recycle stream makes the calculations really complicated because it's not something that can be solved uh, in a straightforward way that like what we did last time so let's see what's the solution strategy that we are going to do so we are going to use something which is called the tiering technique which means that we will assume something and we will check it and it's kind of iterative solution 
and in this uh, solution we are gonna assume a stream so let's say we will split the stream into two uh, streams it's seven which called seven assumed and seven calculated that's why we call we are tearing it we are cutting one stream into two streams and in this case we will assume the whole stream uh, seven which is the assumed seven so in this case if you assume stream number seven then you are adding four information to the mixer and in this case the mixer can be uh, solve it and then you can go ahead and do this so actually what you do you are assuming this value and you are doing this loop calculations in this loop and recalculating stream 7 and if the calculations uh, or the assumption is true then the ass assumed values and the calculated values will match so it will be the same uh, which is uh, not gonna happen actually because it's very difficult to assume four components and get them right um, uh, and actually uh, you're, you're gonna get a different value in this case you will assume another value of seven and go ahead and calculate it and reassume recalculate and you till you find uh, or reach a value that is uh, equal uh, in 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 the in two cases in these two cases in this case you you get the right uh, solution so um let's see how we can do this uh, and actually it's important to have your degrees of freedom table handy in order to see if this uh, this strategy is gonna work or you need to find something else because you need to make sure that the loop will uh, will return back to the original stream that you tiered so you can compare the assumed and the calculated values so let's say in our case uh, we will take it step by step in order to see if we are gonna uh, have this thing uh, going or not so uh, we will assume st stream 7 in this case you are adding 4 information to the mixer so the mixer uh, degrees of freedom of the mixer is going to be 0 now so you can solve the mixer and get stream number 2 so it's now calculated you are adding 4 information to the reactor <coughs> the reactor now is uh, 0 for the degrees of freedom of the reactor is 0 you can calculate the uh, do the calculations for the reactor and calculate stream 3 you are adding now 4 information to the flash separator now the flash separator is solvable you can calculate stream 4 stream 5 stream 5 is, is now solved you can you have 4 more information added to the splitter then you can solve the splitter and uh, calculate stream 6 and stream 7 so now you have stream 7 calculated and stream 7 assumed and you can now compare these two streams and see if they are the same or not and um, this is how you are gonna start the loop and you know that is gonna work and then you will do the iterations on and on till you reach a value of 7 assumed and 7 calculated that are uh, equal to each other and this is what we're gonna do next time when we uh, do the calculations on Excel 12 okay so um, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.